Modern chickens are effectively born into a genetic prison. Their bodies are their cages. They lead short, miserable lives. Uh, pain and suffering is their everyday existence. Fast growth rates have been reported to be responsible for not only the most, but also most severe welfare problems seen in broilers today. Chickens are actually quite a lot like us. They like to play, to explore, to forage, and to perform a whole range of natural behaviours that are really important for their welfare. So chickens are sentient animals, which basically means they feel emotions, such as frustration and pain. But sentient animals are also thought to experience positive emotions, like pleasure and enjoyment. They have individual personalities. Some are cheeky, some are playful. They're incredibly curious, uh, and they simply want to live their lives doing what comes naturally to them perching, exploring for food, interacting with one another. If I was asked to design a torture facility for chickens, it would look a lot like a typical factory farm. The birds are crammed in together, often in terms of tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands. Chickens are the most numerously produced animals worldwide. There are around 66 billion slaughtered for meat every year, and this rise is expected to continue. The term broiler means a meat chicken, or a chicken produced for its uh, muscle tissue. Laying hens and meat chickens are two completely different breeds. They look very different and they behave very differently. Since the late 1950s, breeding companies have managed to halve the amount of time it takes a chicken to reach the same slaughter to wait and they can achieve that in around 35 days, so five weeks. I think meat chickens have become so specialised to maximise protein in order to maximise profit, but it's bad news for chickens and it's bad news for consumers. They are genetically selected to grow so heavy so quickly that their legs can't keep up with such rapid growth, so they become uh, painfully uh, deformed and, and struggle to move. The fact that the birds are growing fast means they're putting a lot of strain on what's a very immature skeleton. So they end up with leg issues, um, lameness issues. And the lack of activity that results means that they're often in regular contact with the wet and dirty litter that they lie on, which can lead to further skin problems. So unfortunately it's a very circular problem that the birds grow fast, so they sit more, they get lesions, and then it's also sort of walk in these, so they want to sit more. So really what motivates a broiler chicken towards the end of its life is just getting up and eating, and they really don't do a lot more than that. We wanted to see what this continual drive and push for faster growth has actually had on the health and welfare of these birds. We wanted some hard scientific evidence taken over time of the way different breeds behave. We ran this trial to basically assess the health and welfare characteristics of the three most commonly used broiler breeds around the world. But in addition, we also wanted to see how that compared to a commercially viable, slower growing bird. Ultimately, we wanted to find out if slower growing chickens lead healthier, happier lives. These birds were kept from basically day old, so we got them at the hatcheries when they hatched, up until um, a slaughter weight. The pens the birds were kept in were a higher welfare pen than you would definitely find anywhere commercially or even in a lot of other experimental settings. So the birds all had a perch um, in the pen from day zero so they could start perching at any time. We also put fewer birds in the pen, so a lower stocking density is what we would say. So each bird had more space to move around. This trial basically confirmed what we had already suspected, so we, in essence, fulfilled our hypothesis that the slow-growing breeds did have better welfare than the fast-growing breeds. Slow-growing breeds were more active. They did more behaviors like perching and movement and foraging. They also had fewer lesions on their feet and their hawks. They maintained this level of activity. They didn't behave like the fast-growing breeds at that weight. They stayed active and mobile. They were still perching. They were still, you know, hopping around and trying to get on my shoulders when I was doing stuff. As the person who was with the birds probably the most throughout the trial and who saw them every day, um, I found it a bit uh, sad to be walking into my shed, especially towards the end of the trials, and to have three quarters of the birds, so three, three fast growing birds, all basically mainly sitting, and also they started to pant a lot as well. This study provides really compelling evidence that slower growing chickens are a better choice. 
It's better for the chickens, but it's also a better choice for consumers. Compared to the slower growing breed, these faster growing breeds had significantly poorer health. They are three times more likely to suffer from lameness, so leg problems. And they're also more likely to have problems with their meat quality. So by that I mean conditions like white striping and wooden breast, which is what people might see when they're out shopping in the supermarkets. We have shown that the slower growing birds have better quality meat. So if you're going to be a consumer and spend your money on a product, wouldn't you want to spend it on the better quality product than one that's been shown to be inferior or have more meat quality issues? Slower growing breeds suffer less and live longer, happier lives. Industry are using fast growing chickens. It's all about raising public awareness. That's when industry is forced to change, when supermarkets are forced to source different types of chickens. This report is about raising that awareness. Well, I think this trial has really highlighted the need for change. It's demonstrated that conventional breeding programs have serious inherent flaws built into them and are associated with catastrophic health and welfare failure. In order to make a change for chickens, I think we do actually need legislation because the market to date has blatantly failed to ensure their welfare. I think that the breeding companies also need to be mandated to prioritise health and welfare over traditional performance characteristics. It can be hard for consumers to identify higher welfare chicken when they're out shopping and that's why we're calling for mandatory, simple method of production labelling on meat products. We can turn this chicken crisis around. If you're in the supermarket, look for a higher welfare label. In the UK, for example, that would be the RSPCA Assured label. And over 100 companies have made the commitment to use slower growing chickens. And I hope that this trial really encourages other companies to follow suit. So industry has a real choice on its hands. Uh, it can use fast growing animals that put on weight so quickly or a slower growing breed. These animals lead more natural lives. And so the choice is really clear. When you couple that with kinder, more humane environments, you really have a situation where the chickens have the chance to live a good life.